Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Surin Bagdasarian. I work at Google, and uh, today, today's topic will be memory allocation profiling. Um, basically, we want to discuss the next steps. Uh, right now, the patch set is in MM stable, and uh, with all the indications, looks like it will be uh, making into the next release. So, we wanted to basically talk about what's next, what we are working on, and get some feedback on what else we need to be doing or not be doing. Um, so during the upstreaming, uh, there was some feedback about the overhead. So that's what we are going after first. Uh, we want to reduce uh, memory overhead. We want to reduce performance overhead, as well as we want to f uh, bring back some of the features which were introduced in the RFC uh, more than a year ago now. Uh, which we think are useful, and we also want some feedback on maybe some other ideas or f features that uh, people who plan to use this feature would be interested in. So the overhead, um, when, we, when we posted the patch set, at that time we measured the overheads, and uh, the biggest overhead was uh, from the page extensions. In here, we can see that memory overhead was about 0.2% of the total memory on a typical system. And the biggest part of it, when we look at the breakdown, is uh, page extensions. So one thing we want to reduce is this number. Uh, in addition to that, um, yeah, and all this overhead basically comes from the fact that we need to uh, store a back pointer to the code tag. Uh, so that when we freeze the uh, allocation, uh, we decrement uh, the associated counters. Um, and the second uh, biggest uh, overhead was performance overhead of 40% of page allocations. Um, the 7% of slab allocations is a small number, but very important uh, because slab allocations are uh, much, much more frequent. Um, so the idea that we have to reduce this is that uh, code tag reference basically is a pointer to a code tag uh, or allocation tag, and there are about four to five thousand allocations in the whole kernel. So we don't really need a 64-bit pointer to reference uh, four or five thousand entries. Um, what we can do is Basically, I have a have an index which can be uh, used to reference them. Uh, for kernel uh, core kernel allocations, that's pretty straightforward because they are stored in the contiguous memory. So just an offset in that memory will give us already a point. Basically, will will resolve that pointer to the code tag that we need to operate on. Uh, when we look at the um, loadable modules, it becomes a bit more complicated because now we need to map because modules can be loaded, unloaded, they are not loaded into contiguous memory. Uh, even if we make it contiguous, when they are unloaded, there is a gap we need to handle. So it's a bit more complicated, but it's doable. Um, I have a, a proof of concept um, with a simple mapping schema. Um, yeah, with Edzinger. Eitzinger search tree. Uh, Eitzinger search trees are basically you, you lay out a binary search tree in an array the same way you construct a heap. They're way better than binary search. The other thought that I had is if we could get some help from the linker and the module code, maybe uh, all these code tags are in their own ELF sections. Maybe we can just uh, reserve some address space for those ELF sections and s store them more or less contiguously. Uh, maybe I maybe I don't know enough about linker scripts to know how to do that. But no, I, I think this would take a bit more. Yeah. So, so wait. If you have a sec, if they're in sections, yes. Then you just add a simple thing in a linker script to say, you know, here, here, and it'll put it into a certain section, 
in memory addresses. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're already putting them into certain sections, but we want the sections from each module to be tightly packed into a single uh, section of address space. Oh, so you mean like for if you have like five modules loaded that have them yep. all yep. put together yep. in the same address space? Yeah, we need a, like a first fit allocation for that range of allocation space. Huh. Well, then, well, uh, yeah, it's going to be a pain. It's one thing is like when the module is unloaded, you have to be able to remove it. Yeah. So you can't have it be in the same page or I mean, because usually that's virtual memory. When a module goes in, that's all virtual memory set up. So I can't see that you're going to use, have two modules in the same page. Now, what you could do is I actually do something similar on F-Trace where when a module is loaded, I will actually copy it over. So if you could keep it in like an init section or something in the module so it's freed after a nip, but then you copy it into your own section, and then, but then you have to remove it later. So you could actually just, if you want, you could dynamically allocate it. Okay, but then we need help from the linker to fix up all those references. Oh, because then you have the reference thing, that, yeah. I mean, well, you could always modify the, because <laughs> it's going to be stuff that's already, in a, so it's a module, so you could do that part. You might actually be able to do that within the kernel, because the kernel is a linker. Yeah. When you load a module, it does a linking. So you could probably, if you had a way of, Finding the code, you can hop at that, but then that's going to be per per architecture, basically. Yeah. Well, if it's per architecture, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Yeah. But that's just one answer. Yeah. I'll hold on to this. Okay, but there there are ways to do it. Uh, we could also basically have another reference, which uh, basically we could have a contiguous memory where we store pointers to the to the code tags, and then basically have an index in that contiguous array. Again, there is an issue with the fragmentation if we load, unload, load, unload, but uh, those uh, probably when we uh, consume the whole space, we can say, okay, from, from here on, on, we are not gonna um, account additional modules. That uh, can easily be done. Um, so, but the idea is basically instead of storing the whole reference um, pointers, we will store smaller um, smaller references, let's say 16-bit, and if we use 16-bit instead of 64, then the, all, all that overhead goes 4x smaller. And um, the next step would be to uh, use, to pack, um, let's say we use 16-bits to reference uh, page allocation. In that case, we can basically get rid of page extensions by storing that those 16 bits in the page flags if they fit. So because we have the page page uh, page flags uh, layout where it's checked at the build time, uh, user can specify a config to say, okay, I want this many bits used to for this tags, and I want uh, spe uh, the config enabled, which allows us to uh, put that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a K config. When I say user, basically, whoever builds a kernel can say, I want this uh, tags to be stored in the page flags. And if they don't fit, we will get the build, build time error, which will say, you can't do this. Either you need to change the number of bits or store them in the page extensions. You cannot use page flags. But if they fit, basically, we are using unused bits, then uh, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, and with that, uh, all the page extension dependencies go away, and that means two, th two big things. Uh, so all this 96% uh, overhead goes away, and also the 40% uh, overhead goes down significantly because biggest portion of that overhead was page extension lookup. Now we don't have to look up for the page extension. It's right in the page flags. So uh, with my proof of concept, I ran some tests and the numbers basically, if we implement just code, code tag reference packing, the first part, um, and here I assume that 16-bit references, which are probably cover most, or if not all the cases that we need, and 128 gigabyte um, system, so from 10 meg megabytes for slab and page uh, per CPU uh, uh, extensions, uh, we get basically down to 2.5 megabytes. Basically, it's, it's cut by four. And page extensions also cut by four. Um, 
one downside is that slab allocation performance overhead goes from about 6.8% to 9.5%. 9, 9 so that's why, and that's a question, maybe we shouldn't do uh, reference packing for slab allocations because performance there is much more important. And um, if we do also the page flags part where we store the uh, page, um, page allocation references inside the page flags instead of page extensions. Basically that uh, page extension overhead goes, goes away completely and 40% uh, becomes 7% overhead for on the performance side because we are not doing the page extension lookups anymore. So for page extensions, this is uh, basically win-win situation. We are getting rid of uh, memory overhead. We are, getting, we are uh, decreasing a lot the performance overhead. For slab allocations, it's we are winning on the memory side, but we are losing on the performance side. And on the memory side, we are not winning much. I mean, 10 megabytes on a 128 gigabyte system, probably not that much to pay with a performance of 4% on allocations. That's why we're kind of leaning towards not doing, uh, basically keeping the, for slabs, keeping the pointers unpacked. Uh, so that we don't spend time on uh, basically um, converting from reference to the pointer. Um, so that's, that's where we're heading. If there are any objections or concerns uh, or questions, please. Uh, ju just a quick one. Um, get it Getting an extra 16 bits of page flags seems surprising to me. Um, I guess I haven't looked at all the different configurations where and seen how many page flags you have available, but I'm, I'm concerned that that's not going to happen all the time or maybe even often, no, especially. On 32 bits, it definitely doesn't. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll ignore 32 bits. So on 64 bits, are you saying you got lots of page flags? Well, um, we know that on Android we can do that, and in, on the Google servers we al already proved that we can do that. So, uh, so, so th th this is optional, and uh, at the build time, uh, the like whoever builds kernel will know if it's. Uh, Possible with the configuration that they selected, the, like if they like how many bits they selected for um, uh, multi-gen LRU, how many bits they selected for, like um, I, th I think there are uh, some uh, CPU info. There is some like some. There's for nodes, for zones. Yeah, for nodes, yeah. for zones. Yeah, so, uh, so so there are some calculations that, uh, during build time of uh, of the fields in the uh, page flags. And if all together adds up uh, that 16 bits are available for this feature, we can fit it in as well. And, and the same thing happens for other features as well. So if, if there is no enough fields to fit, uh, for example, multi-gen um, LRU, then compiling will f fail with the warning that uh, we, we cannot fit with the specific config configurations. It's, it's already possible today to do that. So, so it, it doesn't change anything from yeah, I, I, I understand that. I just, I just wanted to add one more point. Uh, maybe even 16 bits is uh, too many. Maybe like 15 bits is actually enough. Uh, so. Just again on the page flex, uh, do you know what the typical distro settings for those? Uh, I mean, how many bits they reserve for node is on, uh, it's, on it's uh, implicit in session, but how many nodes and the uh, CPU ID, PID bits they reserve in their configs? I, I, I don't so I don't know about typical distro. I, I checked uh, the Google, yes. Yeah, I know on Android we use the 27 bits are used, so out of 64. I think we also store like the the, um, uh, the, the offset into the VMAP, VMAP map, right? Offset so it VMAP. depends on your maximum system memory size, uh -huh. how much page flags are getting used, if I'm not wrong. 
Is this is that no longer the case, or it used to be the case at some point? Yeah, there's also uh, there are also sparse sparse uh, map. I think. Uh, yeah, that's sparse mem. I, I thought that would depend okay. on how many sparse mem sections you have, and yeah. the distros usually support like huge memory, which is why that that is usually fairly consumes mm -hmm. a fairly huge amount. But maybe you're still able to squeeze in 15 or 16. Yes. So far, we built it on two different, very different systems, like on Android and servers. Yeah. I guess Android yeah. is not like in the range of terabytes of memory. So. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but not yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but good, Google, Google servers are, are in that range. So yeah, right. it still works. Um, again, if it doesn't work, it will fail to build, and it will tell you, OK, you don't have enough bits. Either you need to change the number of bits that you want to reserve for this, or you need to go back to page extensions. And this is we this is an option that we we still keeping. We are not getting rid of that option completely because, you know, there could be configurations which cannot support this. So uh, w one thing I was wondering in like in in the beautiful world of memdesk that would be stored within your allocated thing, right? It would be within a struct folio, within a struct I don't know pt desk. Um, Do we have space for that in a memdesk? It would probably end up making memdesk a little bit bigger. So it would end up depending on the details of what ends up ends up where. If there's other reasons for memdesk to expand to two words, then that's the obvious place to put it. If it really needs to go in struct folio, then we'd put it there. Okay, thanks. I didn't look much into per CPU extension memory overhead. Uh, yeah, sorry. I didn't look much into it uh, because they are not predominant allocations in the kernel. Uh, that was kind of one of things to do on, on, in my to-do list. Um, but it, it shouldn't be, you know, very very significant. So uh, maybe we can pack there also, but I don't think we will get big wins there. Got it. Thank you. I just want to go back to the linker thing about the module help. I was just looking at the code. Uh, it actually looks kind of trivial. I was looking at the live patching applying. There's actually helper functions to do relocations in there. So if you have like, if you, I mean, because if the uh, if it's like a relocatable address and goes into the elf functions as relocatable or whatever, mm -hmm. you should be able to find them and be able to make your patch updates right. if you want to move stuff around at, at link time or at, oh, at okay. module load time. Load just time. FYI. Okay, thank you. We'll take a look at that. Uh, so, so we, we already uh, spoke about uh, uh, this uh, couple of feature requests, uh, but uh, I, I just wanted to mention uh, here as well. So uh, one of them is that um, uh, for, for us it would be very useful to uh, selectively enable uh, uh, code tags for particular files. So, uh, or disable it for particular files. So if you know that uh, the network driver uh, keeps allocating uh, a, a lot of slab data and uh, it's very performance critical, uh, that's okay. We can just uh, not track there, but we want to track every single other allocation in the system. So if there is some overhead happens, we can uh, catch it. Um, and uh, the second one, uh, it's uh, about uh, uh, knowing uh, of uh, charged and uncharged memory. So JFP flag has a count, and uh, we want to have uh, pr probably, as we discussed, different columns of uh, 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 of the total accounted size allocated at this stack, total unaccounted size allocated at this stack. Yeah, so. There's something interesting going on there, which is that this is making all of our allocation call sites visible. And that's an example of, of one other thing that we might want to use this for. There, there might be other things about allocation call sites that we want to make visible. Like your example was GFP flags. And we could, in principle, make all GFP flags uh, at each call site visible. And just helpful for, for debugging. Uh, scanning, quickly scanning through and seeing, we're doing a ton of allocations through a GFP no IO uh, path. 
maybe that's causing reclaim issues. Uh, visibility stuff, I, I just find always you learn interesting things that so, way. So, but, but uh, one, ta one tag can have multiple GFP flags. Uh, how would we show that? Would we show just uh, the most common one, the last one? What's so what we could do is uh, check, is this a uh, co constant at compile time? And if so, display the GFP flags. Otherwise, if it's passed in, say, refer to the code and see what happens. Or we could check in the code, uh, are we always getting the same flags and then print it? Or are we getting different flag flags passed through and say, go look at the code? So if, if those GFP flags, uh, your use case, the second part of questions that you asked uh, about um, basically that the goal is here is to show GFP accounted versus GFP unaccounted allocations separately. So right now we have just one counter which says at this specific code location, we allocated five times, let's say, and we allocated, I don't know, three megabytes. Uh, what Pasha is asking for is if some of those allocation came as GFP ac accounted versus GFP unaccounted. So Did then to show them separately. Uh, yeah, if allocation accepts a GFP flag and yeah. It's passed from, from the user, and there are multiple users. It can happen. Uh, what we can do, we cannot have two separate code tags for one code location, but uh, each code tag, actually it's a memory allocation tag, it has a counter. Right now it has one counter. It could have two counters to, uh, to count um, accounted memory versus unaccounted memory. Yeah. Yeah. I, what can say is, is saying we can do some special things, but they seem, seem very specific to your to that use case. Uh, so, uh, if if memory is accounted, we know that we can look into the C groups and know that uh, someone was charged for the, for this memory. But if it's an account, that it's uh, it's basically. Uh, uh, total system overhead, and uh, that's something that uh, uh, th 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 that uh, actually shared among like all the users in the system. And I'd, I'd actually like to take a step back, though. And historically, uh, MemCG accounting was pretty expensive. And the testing that I was doing, it was increasing the co the cost of a slab allocation by like a factor of three. And with memory allocation profiling, we're seeing that that accounting does not need to be that expensive. So if MCG gets cheap enough, maybe that accounting could just be flipped on for every single allocation in the kernel. And if we don't want to account it to a specific user or C group, just go it into a different unaccounted bucket so that we can see a number through the MCG accounting. But, but still, like uh, as a specific tag, we can have uh Accounted to like uh, to, to, to to this uh, unaccounted bucket or to the like uh, to, to to the rest or some accounted bucket, right? I, I didn't to quite some charge the C group. I didn't quite follow that last bit. So uh, again, I don't think we can. Um, there is a reason to account every single allocation, uh, like. Because if, if allocation is shared, like for example, start pages, it's, they are shared. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. Like, why why would we want to count them? Because, well, what are you trying to do now? Uh, you're trying to see how many account uh, allocations are accounted to a C group or unaccounted. This would uh, show you that in a more natural way. If every allocation is accounted in exactly one place, that's that's a property of the system that you want. So instead of getting rid of unaccounted allocations, just account them into a different, this doesn't belong to any user bucket. Sh sh sure, it's the, it's the same thing. So yeah. for, for me, unaccounted, it basically, this doesn't belong so, to any user. So this user. would be basically be a way of answering the question that you're asking entirely within MemCG accounting instead of kind of shoehorning this thing a little bit. Uh, 
but uh, but that would like we would know the total amount of memory that is does not belong to any particular user, but we wouldn't know it for, for oh, a particular for tag. Yeah, like, so, yeah, yeah, I see uh, what you're saying. That uh, this driver allocates some memory that is uh, accounted and yeah. some memory that is just shared for uh, like uh, for the whole system. Okay. And uh, it would be very useful to, uh, to to know the difference. Okay. Yeah, I, that, would, that would be like a 10-line patch. We could probably make that a kconfig option that you opt into. Let me ask, uh, quickly answer mm -hmm. the first question also. Uh, uh, so for the first part, uh, basically wh why, why I wanted to start with uh, bringing back the, contact, uh, the uh, context capture and uh, also dynamic fault injections, those are the first features we want to bring f back from RFC uh, because they, uh, they require the code tag selection mechanism. And that will also be required for those features that you want basically to say, I, I don't care about these allocations, disable them, and I, I care about everything else. So you need a mechanism to identify allocations. So basically uh, part of that, part of implementation of context capture, dynamic fault injection will also be reused so for uh, more features. We need to uh, go into more details. What does it mean to disable? Does it mean to disable just accounting, or does are you shooting for like not even allocating the like if it's a slab allocation, not even allocating allocating the slab extensions? Yeah, I was thinking just uh, uh, why is this Yeah, I, so let me think. We do something like this with dynamic fault injection, right? So when, where we have basically, I, I believe it was in the, with the static keys for the performance reasons. Because we need to select which allocations we want to fail and which we, we don't. So we could reuse the same mechanisms there to say if if one of those flags enabled, then we have a separate logic to check. Is it fault, uh, fault injection? Is it like disabled uh, accounting and so on? So I think by default, we still want to account everything. And once you disable something, but from performance point of view, that might actually be a loss versus win because you have to do additional checks in that case, right? That's right. Yeah, so it, it, you, you would uh, have a performance cost uh, if you do it dynamically unless you disable it with this, like static branches. And, and again, it would be very hard to figure out uh, which tags belong actually to that particular. F well, I guess it would be possible to figure out which tags belong to which file because you, we have that information. But, uh, but, but still, you, you would need to use static branches to disable that. Okay, I'll take a look into the details and we can talk about it later. But um, yeah, I, I got uh, features that you need. Yeah, if I may, a quick question. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you might have allocation sites that are used both by accounted and non-accounted GFP flex, mm -hmm. and you want to distinguish that. So doesn't that mean the allocation site is shared by many different users and the solution in your case is usually to wrap it into the macro and uh, consider the users of that site instead of like trying to distinguish it yeah I think there will be some cases where the same allocation the same code is used by multiple users which use it with different GFP flags that's I I don't have a proof of that or I didn't look into implementation and all the code in the kernel where we share the same allocation uh, for So yeah, so so the the page cache, uh, the X-ray, uh, <coughs> the nodes uh, for the files, the, those are accounted. But for many uh, other uh, user use cases, uh, those are not accounted. Yeah, it, okay, it so gets the flag from the from the page mapping or something uh, like Red X tree has. Okay, so basically, even if we if we, even if we 
wrap around the, the X-array node allocator, it's still, uh, there are still cases where it's allocated with one GFP flag yes, versus yes. the other GFP yep. flag. Um, yeah, that sounds like it is a legitimate concern. So maybe we, again, maybe we can split that counter into accounted <laughs> versus unaccounted. Uh, that also brings up the question that we will need, we actually need a version for that alloc info file, just like slab info file, um, so that if we add, um, add fields there, we, the user space does not break. Okay, so yeah, those are the first features uh, we are targeting in uh, bringing, after we finish with the optimizations, of course. Um, and those features, I think, will, will also uh, create some mechanisms which will be reused in some additional features like the ones that Pasha asked for. Um, Case Cook is also already working on using this for doing per call site uh, KMM caches uh, for defeating heap spraying attacks. So I'm, I'm sure there, there's going to be in interesting uses for this code that I haven't thought of. Yeah, and if you have any ideas of other, other use cases that you, you envision, please let us know. And we'll be happy to work on it. So we are a little bit over the time. Any, any last questions? All right, sounds like no. All right, thank you for listening. So, um, oh. you so um, I was looking at, there are two possibilities. Originally, it was implemented as a separate debugFS node. And uh, I think the first version I want to post just like that so that, um, it's, it's coherent with the original proposal, but uh, there is a, also we are thinking about possibility of uh, instead of implementing that in the kernel to have just a trace point which, where we can attach a BPF and do the context capture in the BPF, which uh, makes kernel implementation basically not worry about that. Uh, kernel code basically will not, uh, it will be all in BPF. Um, but on the other hand, we have to implement it one way or the other, so I'm not sure which one is preferable. So, so. Um, in that case, we would Please use mine. What's that? Thank you. Yeah, so in that case, we would, we would get the um, call stack and the paid for free, and I'm assuming we would mimic MM page alloc to get the GFP flags and uh, migration type and order when the page allocation happens, um, if you have made a trace point. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other fields that you would think could augment us beyond what is exported by? Uh, you mean in, in addition to uh, call stack? Um, in addition to the um, fields we get typically from MM page alloc. For example, the GFP flags and the... Yeah, I think GFP flags would be useful. Um, you know, obviously PID, uh, time step, would be useful information for further debugging. Um, so I had a few more thoughts on this. Um, what if we could also gather timing-based information, for example, how much time you would spend for um, proactive reclaim or whatever, uh, stalls due to um, allocation delays? Oh, I see. Um, uh, so, so how quickly do we realize that this um, particular um, allocation is um, selected for context capture. Like, is it as soon as the, um, as soon as the, um, for example, task stuck is uh, set or only when the post alloc hook is called? No, that, that would have to be done in the, uh, at the injection point, not in the post alloc uh, uh, phase where we increment the counters. Okay, so, okay. It, uh, it has to be done there because otherwise the call, call stack will be completely different, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, Got it. So yeah, so, uh, so, what is so, so I think, I think we're, we're, we're leaking into the next, next, uh, next time slot, right? Oh, so maybe, maybe we can take this, yeah, let's take us into the, hall, into the hallway track. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>